I was reading in the Drudge Report, well, technically I click a link and read another story. I've got it in front of me here. It's from ABC News. I prefer to call that already been conned news because what ABC does, I was talking to my wife about this earlier, maybe the same thing that the major newspapers do, major radio, essentially they're all saying the same lies at the same time, just phrased in different wor words, and uh, people buy it. The average person, we're, we're talking about this, the average person doesn't have the ability to conceive that there can be 30,000 different news outlets all around the world saying the same lies, just parroting them off in different ways. I mean, I'll just give you one example one day, but this happens all the time. And we'll see if you're one of the few that actually could see through or read between the lines of lies to see the truth. It opens by saying, Chattanooga shooting, FBI recovers gunman's disturbing diary. Now, keep in mind, there's a man named Muhammad who had a disturbing diary that explains all this. It's written down in the Quran, the Hadith, the Sunnahs. I mean, basically, it's all in writing. It's been preserved. There's no mystery here. Um, I mean, it, in this article, it says there's 30 new FBI agents that were brought on the scene to try to glean what happened, to discern what could possibly have gone on the mind of Muhammad. This guy's name is Muhammad. He's named after Muhammad, the so-called prophet. And it's, it's no-brainer. I mean, just look at this. I mean, here we go. Keeping in mind, you have to at least have a knowledge, a, a, a basic knowledge of the Quran that it says to kill all Christians and Jews, kill everybody on earth until there's peace on earth when there's just Islam on earth, just Muslims left. That's what the definition of peace is. Now that you know that, and it says that you're supposed to uh, kill in order to well, it's called fight holy jihad, they call it, in order to go up to so-called paradise, I guess they're kind of heaven, uh, to get 72 wives that are all virgins, of course. I mean, this is, well, to each his own, you believe what you want, but that's what the core beliefs are. Now, here, here we go, Chattanooga shooting. It says, with more than 30 FBI <laughs> agents due to arrive in Chattanooga, a diary belonging to a gunman and FBI interviews with his parents, paint a disturbed picture of a suicidal man. Oh, let me stop right there. A suicidal man. What do you think Muhammad wrote in his diaries? He wrote, commit suicide to go to paradise. And while you're committing suicide, kill as many, quote-unquote, infidels along the way. That means that if somebody's a Christian or a Jew, any non-believing Muslim, you kill them and you earn your right to go up to or down to paradise, depending on one's perspective. All right, so of course he's going to be suicidal because he commanded to be suicidal in the Quran. And now they're trying to figure out, oh, why is this man named Muhammad being suicidal, having suicidal thoughts according to his family? Well, he's a good Muslim. He's doing what he's supposed to do, having suicidal thoughts, thoughts of jihad, dreams of jihad. Right, four days after the shooting, I'm reading on, the FBI has not found any connection to overseas terror groups. That's a straw man. I mean, in college debate class, you know, you, you know, you set up a straw man. Something that doesn't exist. A non-issue, if you will. So here's the non-issue here. They find no connection to overseas terrorist groups. So that's the straw man. It's irrelevant. Muhammad didn't say go and commit overseas, uh, terrorism with overseas groups. No, he says, go forth and fight holy jihad. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're fighting with a bunch of people or one person. I mean, basically, a lone gunman, if you will. The, who's a lone gunman? The lone Muslim. Killing. I mean, that's what he's supposed to do, according to the Quran. So, they can't find any connection to overseas terror groups. Ho, ho. But Muhammad Abdul Aziz has a diary, it says here that goes back as far as 2013. They try to be so profound, it sounds ignorant. It goes back as far as 2013. I'll give you one that goes back as far as even before the Middle Ages from Muhammad himself, his diary. Let's talk about his diary, not this one that goes as far back as 2013. Anyway, Muhammad wrote about having suicidal thoughts and becoming a martyr. Well, at least they admitted that, but they put it in quotes. They put, quote, becoming a martyr, unquote as if they don't even want to acknowledge that this stuff really happens. After losing his job and due to drug use. Well, come on, hold on. A, becoming a martyr means you're going to commit suicide. B, it means you're going to take some people with you. C, it means you're going to lose your job. Let me ask you a simple question. What does he need a job for if he's going to kill himself? Of course he doesn't need a job. 
Of course he could get suicidal off losing his job. That's the whole idea. He's planning on committing suicide. <laughs> so he's planning on losing his job. So what's the point? Oh, and as for drug use, oh yeah, you could read in the so-called Holy Scriptures about you have a party before you go. I mean, basically, there's certain things you're allowed to do. You shave the body hair. You, you cry out Allahu Akbar and stuff like that when you do the, the deed, you know, the murder-suicide thing. But, of course, you know, you could do you, certain things are allowed, like alcohol, drug, whatever. Certain things, special obsessions, I almost said, exceptions uh, before you go. And then, of course, in paradise, what do you do anyway? It's a big brothel. <laughs> I mean, read the description of the Quran. It's like a brothel. Uh, okay, so it says, in a downward spiral, uh, Muhammad Abdulaziz, and they're still trying to figure out with 30 more FBI agents, what could that name imply? What religion might he be? I mean, they're, they're just wasting our time. And when government agents go up like that, there's a squandering taxpayers' money. I don't want my tax dollars going for 30 FBI agents to try to figure out uh, who Muhammad was a follower of. Read my lips. Muhammad followed Muhammad. But anyway, so he goes in a downward spiral already been conned news. So it's because if you're watching it, you've already been conned, unless you do it for uh, laugh effect or, you know, you need a good cry and you want to see something pathetic. I don't know. But it says he would abuse sleeping pills, opiates, painkillers, and alcohol. I mean, I, hey, listen, I don't know about you, but if I were to kill myself, I probably want to numb myself a little bit first because it's not a natural thing to, to kill yourself, to take your... Your, your life away from yourself. And it's also not a natural or a moral thing to take the lives away, to snuff out the lives of so many other people. Just boom, they're gone like that. And of course, he's uh, being friendly to everybody. He's talking about what a good friend he is. Uh, Islamic writings, core writings say, befriend the infidel. I mean, don't, it says don't befriend them as a true friend, but allows you to befriend them, to con them before you kill them. You know, it's like... I don't know how to put it. It's just blatantly obvious anybody who's read even a summary of the Quran, what this is doing here. So, of course, he's going to be an all-American blend to the crowd type of person. Why be shocked? It reminds you of Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca at Rick's Cafe, where the police officer comes in and deals with Rick all the time and hangs out at his cafe, drinks and stuff like that, looks the other way to the gambling and stuff like that. And one day the pressure gets on the constable from his boss or somebody to do something about this gambling at Rick's. You know, of course, he's there gambling with the best of them all the time. One day he walks in there and says in the movie, uh, I hear this gambling in this casino. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. There's gambling in this casino. And he you know, goes through the motion of pretending he didn't know. Well, okay, so all these FBI agents are shocked. It's like, how many FBI agents could dance in the head of a pin? I mean, it's kind of like the old joke about uh, how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? Well, no amount of psychiatrists. First, the light bulb's got to want to change. Well, no amount of, how many FBI agents does it take to figure out that Muhammad serves Muhammad? No amount of FBI agents, unless they want to find out. And it goes on. It, 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 it's so ridiculous. I mean, I can't even finish this thing. But when is America to wake up? I, I'm assuming that you've woken up or you wouldn't be watching this far into a boring video where the guy is just kind of tired of <laughs> taking the extra money to put these slideshows, these extra um, you know, these graphics we put on the screen to try to show everything in detail. But I'm just reading this one. I don't even want to take the time and expense to do that. I'm just going to say... Wake up, America. <laughs> and if you're watching ABC News and you believe them, then it's already been conned, ABC News. NBC, I suppose you could think of something more creative for that. But um, the solution to this all, of course, will sound very politically incorrect, but it's to ban Islam. Ban Sharia law. Sharia law is a constitution in direct conflict with the United States con Constitution. So... I mean, when Muslims do what Muslims do, they're do basically the equivalent of ra invading a foreign country and uh, taking over. Because, I mean, if they get Sharia law um, legalized here in the United States, it's, it's pretty much like 
taking Hitler and, and um, fascism and all that doctrine or taking communism or anything else and just saying, okay, you know, whatever you want to do. You want to be a girl today, you can be a girl. You want to be a boy to the, tomorrow, you can be a boy. You can marry the same sex. Soon they'll say you can marry everybody. I mean, if you're bisexual, you can marry both genders, I suppose. So our nation is just morally depraved. We're going downhill fast. We're going to be judged very soon. It's close to the end of the world. It's like almost ready for God to say everybody out of the pool. It's just time to pick whose side we're on. And, uh, uh, but in the meantime, fight to keep Islam illegal and not legal in the United States. I mean, if, if you don't believe me, if you think this is a hate speech, if you think this is anti-religion, read the Quran. It's not religion as much as it's a terrorist manifesto. It teaches and commands people to kill. Kill the Jew first, the Saturday people as they call them, then kill the, the Christian, the Sunday people as they call them. And then along the way, while you're fighting, quote unquote, holy jihad, which is murder, suicide against innocent people. Oh, they call them infidels. They're like animals to them. So they don't feel bad when they kill. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I'm just out of stuff to say. So just um, fight to ban Islam, Sharia law, and don't let people say it's hate speech. Islam is hate speech. Killing innocent victims just because they're not their religion is hateful. And when Obama hears about these hate crimes of Muslims killing people, he doesn't call them hate crimes. He apologizes to the Muslims saying, oh, we're so sorry that you might be targeted by people on the streets now because they're not happy about you running around killing a bunch of American citizens. I mean, if you're a pro-lifer trying to save babies, they execute you. Paul Hill was given the death penalty for shooting an abortionist and his bodyguard uh, to try to keep babies from dying that, that day. I mean, no prior offenses. It's just going to give him the death penalty. No, I don't even know if he had a parking ticket. But there's a double standard. There's a total double standard here. If you can't see it, wake up. If you do see it, keep fighting and do more, whatever it takes, because our country... Is going to heck in a handbasket at the rate we're going. We got to do something. There's to be nothing left. If you think you could hide, and I know I said I was about done, and I'll really finish up this time. I apologize. But if you really think we're just going to snap out of this someday, or God is going to wink at this and ignore it, I don't think it's happening. Pick a side. You're either on God's side or you're on Satan's side. And the God of the Bible, the Judeo-Christian scriptures. Um, it's a very different God than the God of the Quran. Read the Quran. It describes the coming body. Exact description of our Antichrist. I mean, it basically, from a Muslim's perspective, he is the Savior. From our perspective, he's the Antichrist. Same person, different viewpoint. I highly suggest reading two books. The Bible, in its original, oldest um, translations with an interlinear where you're reading in ancient Hebrew and, and deciding for yourself what the interpretation is into your language, English or whatever. And also the Quran. Or better still, you can read Prophet of Doom. It's free on the internet. It's the whole Quran put in sequence, word for word, but just categorized. Like under love, you'll find nothing, no love. Under submission, you see a lot of, uh, you know, scriptures, so-called scriptures. So read the two books. Pray to God to open your eyes and so you know what you believe and you teach others what to believe. And if you want to find some uh, heavy-duty uh, teachings that can help you along the way, you can visit yadayah.com. That's Y-A-D-A-Y-A-H.com. They have resources there to understand Islam, understand Christianity, Judaism, and um, a lot of insights in there, including a radio blog uh, about current events in the news, by a guy by the name of uh, Yada, I believe he goes under as a pen name, who's far better at all this than me. Okay, we're done. If any of you watch this to the end, I'll be surprised. But thank you if you did.